Hey guys, my name is Yusuf. I'm the Community and Academic Program Manager here at SimScale. Hey guys, I'm Meg and I'm the Content Manager at SimScale. Together, we do a podcast about engineering and our customers using SimScale for their simulation purposes. Hi, welcome, Eric, to our podcast. It's a pleasure to have you on our show. We'll start with maybe that you introduce yourself and tell the audience who you are and what you do. Yeah, totally. I'm happy to be here. Uh, my name is Eric Kopp. I'm a mechanical design engineer at OnLogic. Uh, we're an industrial computer company uh, based out of Burlington, Vermont, uh, which is in the northeast part of the United States. Uh, we do a lot of embedded computers for rugged and industrial environments, um, stuff that's meant to sort of hold up to a number of different external factors, whether it be intense heat, intense cold, uh, shock, vibration, um, and really just give the customer as consistent of an experience as they can get uh, for whatever environment they want to install our computers in. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Can you tell us a little bit about like your motivation behind getting into this career path? Like what, what first brought you to be a, a mechanical engineer and then why on logic? Yeah. Um, so uh, what initially made me want to be an engineer was just the ability to make change and impact the world around me um, in a positive way. So um, when I went to university, uh, I studied uh, mechanical engineering and focused a lot on sustainability and recycling processes, uh, did a lot of research in my undergrad around those things. And then uh, when I was looking for jobs out of college, I was looking for a company that would really allow me to immerse myself in whatever I'd be doing as fast as possible. Uh, and, and OnLogic was um, really high on that list. You know, um, They're a company that gives their young employees a lot of access to these sorts of projects, to doing actual work that you know has actual like results in the real world um, as soon as possible. And um, when I got the offer, I immediately took it. Um, and, and it's really been great. I've been able to work with customers like one-on-one -on, -one, um, on customized projects, as well as um, design portfolio projects for our company, um, you know, in my time at OnLogic. And, and it's really been great. Mm -hmm. awesome. Was it the first time in OnLogic uh, that you came across CAE, so Computer Aided Engineering, or have you done CAE before? So um, I had schooling in some different forms of CAE uh, back at university, uh, mm -hmm. um, obviously working in CAD software, so uh, whether that be NX or SolidWorks, um, just doing general modeling, and then uh, later on in my uh, studies, uh, different forms of topology optimization, um, you know, doing stress analysis on different uh, parts and analyzing where we can remove material, where material needs to be added in order to, you know, get a good weight to strength ratio. Um, I also dabbled in a little bit of flow analysis, um, rheological analysis, um, non-Newtonian flow. So mm -hmm. plastics and stuff like that. Um, and and really the, the CA, E was a means of, you know, getting an answer to a question that we had um, uh, and, and doing that in as quickly and efficiently of a way as possible. Can you maybe think back to like the first time you had to um, create a CAD or like your first ever experience with CAE and kind of like how you felt about it and um, what, what was going through your head at that, that time? Yeah, I, I think I think like everybody. Um, when you're new to the field of engineering and you're interacting with these uh, programs for the first time, it's very intimidating. Um, you know, whether it's your first time opening a CAD model or your first time looking at a mesh, uh, it's, it can be very overwhelming because, you, you know, you're trying to take in all the information that's being thrown at you and also understand how you can use whatever program you're using to impact what's on the screen. Um, and, you know, over time, it's just like any skill, um, understanding what's important, um, what is an effective use of your time and what, what tools you have accessible to you. So that way your mouse and keyboard really become like a extension of your arm. And this screen is really just an extension of your brain and what 
you want to see on the screen is what's on the screen. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us what your first experience with simulation was either like on a real project? So namely real life or, or online? Yeah. Um, so my first interaction with the simulation, um, was in college working on the topological optimization. Um, but my first time really working, um, with something that I would at the end of the day, see a real world example of, um, and a physical part, you know, was here at OnLogic. Um, we have a really fast and agile design process, uh, um, that allows us to get prototypes in our hands incredibly quickly. Um, and one thing we did when we were looking for a new simulation software, um, was try and find something that would allow us to iterate very quickly. Um, depending on the situation that we were dealing with. And, and so when we went with SimScale, you know, we did a lot of um, natural convection analysis and sort of like trying to figure out what sort of results we could expect from a prototype that we would be ordering um, in as little time as possible. And, and so that was really the first time that um, I interacted with a simulation software that gave us a real world mm. uh, part that we could then test against it. Cool. Um, so you said like your design process um, at OnLogic is very fast and agile. So, I mean, you're quite young in your career, I guess, like Yosef and myself, but have you over the course of your career seen any kind of like design process changes um, in terms of like using more cloud-based tools or like more, um, I don't know, different types of like CAE platforms and applications? Like, could you talk a bit about that? Yeah, yeah. Um, so like I said, uh, on Logic, we're pretty uh, small design team. Um, and because of that, we need to be very multifaceted as team members. Um, mm -hmm. And so one thing that I've sort of seen be adopted by our company, as well as other companies around, you know, the country is just the ability for engineers to understand things that aren't necessarily their immediate responsibility, because you need to understand the impact of what you're doing upstream and downstream. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm seeing more and more an understanding of other roles that aren't necessarily your own. And that really feeds into the design thinking methodology, you know, which is sort of like a five step process that involves understanding who the customer is, designing for the customer, um, testing, prototyping, um, and iterating um, before you come out with a final product. Um, and so that, that's sort of where I'm seeing a lot of the industry going um, mm -hmm. and understanding not necessarily, um, you know, what your outcome is going to be before you start designing, but figuring that out as you go along and really innovating within that space. Mm -hmm. During the product development phase, um, let's say during the concept and design phase, how important do you think is it to have to front load with CFD, meaning that it, how important it is to have IT solutions available? I think, I think it's incredibly helpful, especially when getting um, higher level management and, uh, you know, decision makers buy in on projects, you know, um, especially if there is a large economic investment required, you know, if you have a project that is going to require a million dollars worth of engineering uh, time, you know, uh, you need to be able to stand behind uh, whatever sort of feasibility analysis you're doing before the project. So that way they can make an educated decision. And one thing that we've really done with SimScale is to run these simulations in a way that, you know, gives our management the ability to give a yes or no on a project very early on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And wh where do you see uh, CAE tools in general will go into the future? So, so I really see CAE going in two different directions. Um, you know, one is improving the top top end simulations that are being done at places like universities, like research laboratories that require, um, you know, incredibly large amounts of compute. Um, the other is really improving the mid tier uh, simulation softwares. And those are two really different things. And I can really speak to, you know, sort of the mid tier consumer tier simulation softwares. Um, you know, I, I think that I see those going in a direction that really optimizes, um, you know, uh, cost benefit analyses, um, accurate simulations, and also like intuitive interfaces. Um, so that way, you know, 
an engineer who's working on a project doesn't need to spend a lot of time getting results that give them a level of confidence in their design. Mm. Um, you know, it might not be as incredibly accurate, like 99.9999% accurate as, you know, that really, really high end, uh, you know, large compute simulations that are being done at universities and stuff. But I, for our company, you know, what we see is like, if we're within 5% accuracy, we can really stand behind and understand what sort of results we're going to be getting from, you know, any prototype that we might be making. So accuracy is important. And I guess like a quick kind of design time process is probably important. But if you could like design your perfect tool, perfect workflow for OnLogic, what would that look like? So it doesn't have to be something feasible. Yeah. It just like in general, like what would be like the dream? Yeah, yeah. Honestly, um, SimScale is pretty close to it. Um, um, you know, uh, COVID-19 is something that a lot of the workforce is dealing with right now. OnLogic is an essential business. Um, and in that we are still operating. However, our engineering team is all operating remotely in order to keep our production team, you know, as isolated as possible. So we're not bringing in any sort of um, uh, COVID into our production team and letting that spread. Um, and because of that, we've needed to access our simulation tools remotely. Um, you know, with a traditional simulation software that runs on a desktop, for example, or a large rack mount system, um, you know, we would have to be on site or using a VPN to gain access to that in a way that, you know, might impact our workflow. But having access to a cloud simulation software that all of our team members can use has been really helpful because, uh, you know, we already are interacting with SimScale in the way that, you know, we are now when we're at the office, you know, it, it doesn't really change our workflow. Um, and, and that's been, been very helpful. You know, no one's had to carry home a giant desktop computer in order to run simulations at home. Um, yeah, that would be a bit of a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, and, and just uh, having tools that really break down a lot of the complex things that are done in thermal simulation in um, stress analysis into more layman's terms, you know, um, there are a lot of variables flying around. There's a lot of, you know, different terminology flying around within the simulation space and um, understanding all of that as an engineer who's also doing other work can be very, um, you know, time consuming. Um, and the way that SimScale breaks down a lot of the complex concepts into things that, you know, everyday engineers can understand um, who aren't necessarily masters of simulation software is, is very helpful. Um, you know, we're, we're able to speak sort of the same language um, mm. and, and understand um, what the results of our choices in the simulation software are going to be very easily. Right, awesome. So with, um, you know, what's happening currently with like the global pandemic and all of the engineers from your company having to work at home, do you think this is going to change the way engineering teams work in the future? Do you think this is going to become more commonplace, whereas before, you know, it was more commonplace to kind of all sit together in, in an office environment? Yeah, I think, I think it's going to have to be a case-by-case -case basis, depending on a company, to see mm -hmm. what works for them. Um, you know, I, I think a lot of the advantage of um, being face-to-face, -face, especially when dealing with um, actual product or prototypes is um, still going to be there. Uh, however, you know, early stage design, um, iterative design, especially if you're working in small teams, um, can very easily be done, you know, remotely, whether it's using um, tools like Slack or tools like um, Google Meets. Uh, you know, our team has done an amazing job in staying in contact with one another and, you know, bouncing ideas off one another. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it really depends on what stage of the design process you're in, uh, in, in how that's going to play out in the future. True. Mm -hmm. Good point. Yeah. Is there anything you want to say to the audience in, in, in case they want to reach out to you or to OnLogic in general? Where can they find you, for instance? You can reach us online. Um, we have you know, a website, uh, OnLogic.com. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, there you can gain access to any of our sales team members um, and ask them pretty much anything. They're all incredibly knowledgeable um, and they'll be able to help you 
um, with whatever project you're working on. Beyond that, uh, you know, I hope everyone is staying safe and staying healthy in this time. It's it's really crazy and unprecedented. Um, and so I, I hope that everyone is maintaining some level of sanity and also health and very very nice message um <laughs> cool so i think at this point we're all um you know we're done from our side with all of our questions it's been lovely to have you on the show eric uh yeah. thank you very much thank you guys thank you so much